And then I was finally thinking, yes, I think I can finish a song which already is on my mind for 10 years. And uh, yeah, here you go. Yeah, some 10 years ago when I wrote the refrain. <laughs> <laughs> I already had in mind that this could be a great life song. Yeah, and because of the lyrics are pointing into that direction anyway. So the, the problem was uh, the last 10 years I've never found a riff fitting to the song. I never was able to finish it for whatever reason. I mean, there are songs like that, which, which I again and again for every songwriting period listen to again and again. And I think it's freaking great. I like it. I love it but I'm close to banging my head to the wall because I couldn't find the, the, the missing parts. This time, fortunately, again, I was sitting in front of the television, bored to death, because everything that went on the tube went like, ah, boring, what do I do? Oh, my guitar. So I grabbed my guitar, looked, watched television, play, and then suddenly there was this da 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 Honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't play it. <laughs> so I had to rehearse it because I wanted, actually I knew what I wanted to play, but it always takes like 10, 15 minutes of rehearsal to finally be able to play my own ideas. And then I nailed it down. So, okay, I think in the moment it's a frigging great idea, but don't get too overwhelmed. Just wait a little bit sleep over it, listen to it tomorrow, and I was completely hooked when I listened to it the next day. And then I was finally thinking, yes, I think I can finish a song which already is on my mind for 10 years. And uh, yeah, here you go. Everybody, everybody knows that I'm a big KISS fan, and actually I, I learned to play guitar alongside KISS, which was easy to do because we all know that KISS riffs are not really sophisticated, super heavy to learn, and. Uh, for me, at, at, at a kid of 15, starting out with a guitar, it was the perfect band to play along because you had instantly the feeling of, yes, I'm, I'm getting better and better, even though the riffs you played were not really hard to learn. But for a beginner, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do, I think, to, to realize, hey, I can play along with my idols. Nowadays, I know it was not a hard guitar playing and everybody can do it, but it, it got me the kick to go on and try more and even learn a little bit more complicated guitars and until I reached a point where I was or I considered myself good enough to write my own songs. And certainly you need your band then to make it sound professional. I mean, you probably don't want to listen to the demos. So sometimes it's, it's probably only understandable for myself. Other people would probably think, okay, and this should become a song, but yeah, with the band's help, and if the idea is good, uh, you have some great songs going on. So at least I had the idea, even if you listen to the demo and would not come up with the idea that mass pollution sounds like mass pollution sounds now. So <laughs> I have to give credit to the band here. But yeah, KISS is definitely a good key, key word here. Uh, that's the American part. Um, the riff itself, I thought, when I, when I nailed it down and listened to it the next day, I'd rather say it was a bit of a faster priest to this priest riff or something like that. Um, at least my boys told me that they have the same impression and, uh, and everybody was actually happy about it. Too American is always a bit dangerous, it's getting into the too cheesy corner. So a British riff is always a little bit cooler, my opinion. Um, even though, again, I'm KISS fan, so I'm open for cheese. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was I was a bit hooked about it, about the idea that I'm old enough to to have witnessed how metal was actually, or how they try to pull metal down in the media all over the world, and uh, we'd been the bad guys, and uh, there would be people committing suicide of, after listening to metal music and, and bullshit like that. I mean. Everybody who's old enough knows what I'm talking about. We've been through that days where even Judas Priest was actually pulled in front of a court to actually uh, defend themselves that they actually did not intend to, that, that some priest fans would commit suicide, as he did. 
and uh, definitely not because he listened to Judas Priest, bullshit like that. I, I, more or less I was reminded when I listened to the biggest lie in the, in the nowadays media where we all being framed back in the Iraq war. And I still hear that friggin' Powell over all broadcasters in the friggin' world, um, weapons of mass destruction. I think 20 times per day you listen to that, weapons of mass destruction. So actually they finally went to war against Iraq to avoid these weapons of mass destruction being torn down on European or NATO uh, countries, whatever. We all believed it. I, I believed it, guilty. And at the end of the day, nowadays, we know it was just the biggest hoax and the biggest lie ever being presented to the, to the world. There was, was no weapons of mass destruction, never been found, and actually it was just an, an, an invented reason to actually go to war. It kind of reminded me to the witch hunt they did uh, back in the days against metal music. Everybody was telling metal is bad, metal is evil. Everybody believed it from like my parents, probably your parents. And at the end of the day, now we know it all was just a stupid big lie. And that's why I made this little twist of weapons of mass destruction and we are no weapons of mass pollution. <laughs>No, not at all. And, and honestly, I, I told everybody, if they listen close, they realize that Michael is very loud in the refrain. But probably when I yell and shout, I have that broad voice, I don't know, and, and kind of overcolor everything. But I swear to God, if you, mute, if you mute Michael in the refrain, something big is missing. So he's, he's bringing in that, that melodic part. So the melody comes much more across with him than without him. If I, if I sing it alone, I personally think there's some magic that you would lose. Unfortunately, you don't hear him, even though he's the same loudness than I am. But he's just coloring my voice. But then again, we've both been super happy because this is something that we now think as a very super big advantage. We are blending. Even when I'm brought with my brutal rock and roll, yelling, shouting, whatever you, you name it. When he is with me, he, it's getting automatically much more mel melodic. So that's another strength we found out during the production. Whenever we, whenever we were like thinking about who sings what, we try to sing it together. Very often we do. Even though people don't realize it. <laughs>